Hey everybody, welcome to this Microsoft 2008 R2CA part two, implementing an SSL certificate, setting it all up video presentation. We're gonna be using a state licensing analogy. So basically it goes like this. You wanna set up a website, you wanna have a certificate, you wanna set up a business, you gotta have a license. You wanna have a certificate, you gotta have a CA. You gotta have some way to go get that certificate. So what we're gonna do is use the analogy of a state licensing agency to issue a license to a business and compare that to getting a certificate for your website. So the analogy would be something like this. If you went to a shopping center and it was like a strip shopping center and there was a bunch of storefronts in that shopping center. And let's say that that shopping center has an owner and you decide that you wanna open up a storefront in that shopping center. It is possible not likely, but just for an analogy, that the owner of the shopping center is gonna offer you a service. And the service would be that if you open up a storefront, what he's gonna do for you is he's gonna contact the state and go get your license for you to be an operating business in that shopping center. He'll contact the state agency for you, he'll submit your information, he'll go pick it up, and he'll come over and put the actual frame up that has your certificate on the wall in your business. And that's kind of what we're gonna do in this analogy. IIS is gonna play the role of the shopping center. And since you can have multiple storefronts in a shopping center, uh, since IIS can have multiple websites on a server, each website will play the role of the business storefront. So what we can do is have multiple websites on the server. And let's say that I have three or four websites. One of those websites is Cool Web. And Cool Web wants to go out and get a certificate for his website. So we have Cool Web. And Cool Web's a pretty simple website. He's got a folder called Data. And what we want to do is go get a certificate for the website. Now, the thing that's really strange about it is, is that the certificate doesn't really originate from the website. In order to get the certificate, the server actually goes out and makes the request for the certificate. And the certificate gets installed on the server and then bound to the website kind of like this shopping center manager is gonna go get your business license and then walk in and hang it up on your wall for you. So, very interesting, right? The, the, the website does not make the request. I repeat, the website does not make the request. The server makes the request for the certificate. Now, what we currently have in our environment, before we actually dive in too far here, is we have a Active Directory domain, we have DC1, it's all 2008 R2, we have Active Directory. Now we've already in the previous video in part one, it shows you how to install the Enterprise Root CA. So the Enterprise Root CA was already installed. Now, when that was done, this certificate was published, very important, it was published into Active Directory. And what that means is that all the computers in the domain already know who the root is. There's no questions to be asked, they already know. Let's take a look at the workstation. So here we are at our Windows 7 workstation. We're gonna hit the Alt key, and this is IE8. Hello, Alt, there we go. This is IE8, so we're gonna to go to Internet Options, and we're gonna to go to Content, and Certificates, and Trusted Root, and boom, right there, you can see it. This workstation already knows who the root is. The reason this workstation already knows who the root is is because of this publishing that took place. So that's already been established. There's three things that are always checked by the client. And the first thing is, do I know who the issuer is of the certificate? And already, simply because of this certificate being published into Active Directory, the workstation knows about that already. In other words, you're not gonna need any type of a group policy to tell them who the root is in this type of scenario. Now, if I had a standalone root that was not a member of Active Directory, that would be a totally different scenario. Then we'd have to get a copy of that certificate, bring it into our domain controller, create a group policy, and, and go through some steps to make that available to our workstation. So whenever the workstation goes to actually make the connection to the website and go to that data folder that we're gonna require SSL on, if there's a certificate bound to that website and then required on that folder, the first thing we're gonna check is, do I know the issuer? And he can say yes at this point because of this publishing into Active Directory. So the answer is gonna be 
Yes, we know who he is. That's already been taken care of for us. Okay, so we're good there. So we're just trying to set things up right now. Just kind of explain what's going on. Uh, we installed the enterprise root CA and he has what is called a self-signed certificate. When you install that very first top level root, he signs his own certificate with his own private key, embeds his own public key into that certificate and signs it with his private key. So that's very important. Also, uh, we're going to be using a key pair on the web server. The key pair that we have on the server that's going to be bound to the website is using what's called asymmetric encryption. So what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about how to actually make a request to get a certificate. So I'm that business owner and I've gone to the, or maybe I should say I'm the storefront owner. I'm going to the owner of the shopping center and I'm going to say, look, I'm ready for my license from the state. He's going to say, no problem. Let me go take care of that for you. So what he's going to do is he's going to generate something called an REQ file. It's a request file. And when you go to make that request as that shopping center owner, that strip center owner, you're first going to generate a public key and then you're going to generate a private key. And that private key never leaves the machine. It's like in a lockbox. Never leaves machine kind of in a lockbox. Okay. There is one exception. I'll put a note down here. Maybe I should put a little asterisk here, maybe. Let me put an asterisk here first. A little asterisk. And that one exception would be the private key. The private key can leave the machine if you set up something called key archival, right? which we're not going to get into in this video. Okay. But, but typically though, that private key never leaves the computer. It stays there. It's locked up. Also the private key typically 99% of the time is going to be doing the D crypting where the public key will do the encrypting. So, Public keys encrypt, private keys decrypt. Now, the public key encrypts, right? The private key decrypts. It is possible for these two to reverse those roles. I can have the public key decrypt and the private key encrypt. But since we want to keep the encryption private and secure, we lock it down so that only the public key encrypts and only the private key decrypts. And then we're going to generate this request file. And in the request file, what we're going to do is we're going to take this public key. We're going to include the public key in the request file. We're going to include some other information. We're going to include things like the common name, like www.coolweb.local. Uh, we're going to include the state, the city. We're going to include that it's a uh, we're going to know that it's a web server request that we're making. You know, all this stuff is going to be included in this request that we're making. Then we grab this request and we're going to take this request and we're going to submit it to our server. And what our server has is a whole list of templates made available. So the server has a big giant list of templates of all the different types of certificates that can be issued, like a user certificate, a computer certificate, if I could type, it would help computer and web server. Just like a state agency would have a whole list of licenses it could issue. Now, let me just show you this on the server real quick. So here's your certificate authority. Here's a list of all the possible certificates it potentially could issue. This is in the certificate template snap in. Now a little bit of confusion here. See how these are both called certificate templates. Very confusing. Not good, right? This is a list of the current certificates I'm allowed to currently issue. So entire list of everything I could possibly or potentially issue and the short list of what I currently can issue. And the good news is web servers there and web servers down here. So we do have the ability to issue a web server certificate. 
So think of this as the state agency and the state agency would have the same thing. This is a list of all the licenses the state agency potentially could issue, but this is the current list that the state agency can issue, right? So there's definitely a comparison there. Then we submit the request up to the server. So this is kind of step one. So we're going to submit the request up like this. So that would be step one. We're going to submit the request, submit the request. And then step two, once this is received up here, we're going to use the template that the enterprise root has. We're going to use this web server template. I can bring that through like this. We're going to build a template. Excuse me. We're going to build a certificate from the template. We're building a certificate from the template and we're going to grab all this information and we're going to stick it <laughs> inside that certificate. So certificates are built from templates. We're going to put the public key up there into that certificate and all the other stuff that came along with it. And I can write really tiny here, real tiny writing, right? So all the, the other stuff that goes with it, like the www.coolweb.local would go in there, the state, all that information would go into that certificate. And then what would happen is he would sign it with his private key, the same one that si self signed the original. He signs this with his private key like this. He signs it and then it gets sent back down to the server. So the final step is we take this and we ship it back down to the server. So we grab it and then this gets placed back down here. And we have a public key embedded in a certificate that can encrypt data. Encrypt, make that a little bit bigger there. So have a public key that encrypts. So basically what we've just done before we go to the next step, and actually let me clean this up a little bit here because we need to get rid of some of these lines. That'll be confusing. Get rid of that red line there. Now this red line right here is very important. We're going to continue with this because this is important. This private key was used to do this signing right here from the parent. And that's what links those guys together. So if I were to walk into the business, Back to my analogy, right? If I were to walk into the business, I would see now a frame on the wall with a piece of paper in it with a seal on it that it came from the state of Florida or some kind of some kind of state agency or something. And that would be that last step. So we submit the request up. So we submit the request up. like this. And then we generate the certificate from the template. Number two, we send it back down number three. So overall, it is a three-step process generically. Submit the request, generate the certificate from the template, put all the stuff in the public key, all the identifying information, sign it with the private key, and then send it back down just like that. Now, when we switch back over to the server, we can see just how quick this is. So all we do on the server is click on the server. This would be my shopping center. I go to certificate, server certificates. Now I have some choices here. Import a certificate, create a self-signed. I don't want to do that. Self-signed, my clients are never going to know who actually issued the certificate. And every time somebody connects to the website, they're going to get that big message that comes up that says warning. Uh, you know, we don't know who you got this from. Do you want to continue anyway? Yes or no? And there's a good chance that many would say no. And the only way to get around that is to have them install the certificate on their machine, which is okay. Uh, import, if I was getting the certificate, uh, you know, if I was moving the website from an old server to a new one, I could import the private key. Uh, create a certificate request. This would go out to a third party like VeriSign. They would go through the same three-step process. They would, I would submit the public key and all my information. That'd be my request, my REQ. They would then create the certificate from the template, put their stuff in it, sign it. They would send me an email to notify me. 
then I would complete the request by picking up that pending request and install it. So typically, these two steps are done when I'm sending out a request to a public CA, like VeriSign or Thought or somebody like that. Now for my example, for my internal example, for my intranet website internal example I'm giving you, I'm going to generate a domain certificate request. But remember, this request is coming from the server, not from the website. The request is coming from the owner of the shopping center. So we're going to create that request right here. It's going to be www.coolweb.local organization cool cool web city I don't know what city um, what's a good short name Weston Florida just like that click next give it a name friendly name web cert we select our CA which is enterprise root and we're going to submit our request just like this we're going to submit our request to our CA and when I click finish boom those three steps one two three bam just like that private key built public key built added to public key added to my request certificate built information added to my certificate certificate signed return back to the server signed by the enterprise root CA and I'm operational the one thing I got to do now is actually bind the certificate to the website and we'll see that in the next video we'll see you in part three binding the certificate to the website